Good afternoon. Boa tarde. Seeing the composition in the audience and the composition uh, here on the stage uh, reminds me of a, an old academic joke of the scholar who decided to present a paper at a conference on the other side of the globe. And when he came to the room to give his paper, there was only one person sitting in the audience. Well, he gave his paper, and at the end he said, thank you uh, to the person who was sitting there. And the person sitting there said, you don't have to thank me, I'm the next speaker. <laughs> well, we're almost at that point uh, now. Uh, I will give you, uh, if you permit, an abstract of, of my paper before reading it. It's only about th three pages long. But I think the event will be publishing uh, the texts that uh, some of the presenters have offered. So you'll get a, a fuller text uh, in, in that uh, textual version. But I'd like to do a, an abstract just to give you an idea of where I'll be going uh, in my talk. We have an expression in Brazil, if you suddenly get an inspiration, you say, the saint uh, descended into my head, it was Santo Basho. And last year, reading so much about the fourth generation of industry, it became very clear that robotics, uh, automation, artificial intelligence, big data, analytics, and all of that were entering into all sectors of the productive life of a country. And so it also became clear to me that there might be some interesting solutions using distance education methods. Because around the world, and Brazil is not one of the leaders in this area, but around the world, South Africa, Canada, uh, Ireland, and so forth, universities, schools, individual school teachers, unions of workers, syndicates, are producing in the last 10 years since the United Nations, UNESCO, recognized this kind of activity, this kind of production of didactic, didactic material called open educational resources. They're being produced by the tens of thousands in different languages, in Chinese, Japanese, English, and so forth. And here in Brazil, we're making very little use of those. So it occurred to me that with the loss of employment of some people, even the executive range of work and people on the floor of the on the factory floor that we could link these two things that is re-education lifelong learning of adults who are already in the in the workforce but they have to learn these new things and most easily in bits and pieces so rather than courses i am proposing a new model which is very cost effective easily made dynamic and probably very useful for individual learners because I suggest a strategy that we study in the field of communications, I'm a professor of communications, uh, making a difference between, between push technologies and pull technologies. I'm suggesting that we use these open educational resources to be found on the web free of charge with no royalty payments to be made as long as you acknowledge uh, what, where, the source where you obtain this material. We can join this offering of free knowledge in bits and pieces because they're not in course structures generally. They're, they're, they're bricks in which the student can ac accumulate bricks and he or she can make the edifice of his or her uh, uh, knowledge base. Uh, so, let, let me go to the formal part of my paper. As we witness the rapid acceleration of changes in the workplace led by techniques, led by technological advances and the need for the constant upgrading of the workforce, it is possible to conceive of an educational center which offers a refreshing new model based on an idea in communications a pulling effort on the part of the learner rather than a pushing effort on the part of the teaching institution. 
It appears that essentially all productive sectors of the modern economy, industry, agriculture, health, education, among others, will be adopting similar operating innovations, such as automation, artificial intelligence, analytics, and others, making it even more feasible to imagine an, an easier migration of workers from one sector to the other in order, as, as opportunities present themselves, diminish, diminish in some sectors while, oh, and other, and de develop in other sectors. To return to the conventional classroom to learn the necessary knowledge, that is, learners, or those who have to learn new forms of, of dealing with the work that they do, to go back to the traditional face-to-face -face classroom uh, is, is becoming more and more difficult, more, more uh, intolerable, uh, because uh, the competencies and the attitudes in hard and soft var varieties required by the new workplace is, is a dismal pr perspective for the motivated learner. Because in the traditional classroom, the new learner uh, will find curricula which bundle uninteresting content along with interesting. The extended classroom seat time goes on. You can't sit 30 hours in a classroom nowadays and if, especially if you have to traverse many miles within a large urban center to go to a face-to-face -face classroom, it just becomes uh, intolerable. Uh, commuting costs. If the learning is done face-to-face -face, and a pace of knowledge acquisition, which may be too slow for the able learner. Simultaneously, as we look around the world, we observe the production in schools, universities, ministries, companies, labor unions, syndicates, non-governmental entities, and even independent professional educators of what are called learning objects, LO. We must make a distinction here between LO learning objects and LO learning organizations, which we heard about in the last session this morning. Or digital content for online learning in a variety of media types, texts, videos, audios, images, graphics, computerized simulations in large and small sizes. And they can include uh, lectures and courses. And adaptable to any theory of learning. Now, when ready to be disseminated on the web, these learning objects are encased in open educational resources, OERs. They are encased as a kind of traveling, a protective traveling box and containing metadata which permit cataloging the subject of the contents. To be, uh, to be called an open educational resource, the box and its contents must be in an open format, images in PNG, video in WebM, web pages in HTML, and they must be in either the public domain or bearing an open license of the Creative Commons type, so as to be able to be used, reused, retained, revised, recombined, or distributed freely as long as there is attribution given of the original source and no commercial use made of them. Created on all five continents, or six continents, depending on how you count continents, these learning objects and open educational resources represent the new bricks with which learners can construct the edifices of their own individual knowledge bases. What is required now is that there be created, scattered around the world, referatories, referatories, which themselves do not hold the voluminous contents of the OERs, but rather offer digital links to the repositories containing the learning objects. Dedicated to their special sectorial interests, it's industry, health, education, each referatory will have a staff responsible for identifying on a global scale relevant learning objects, their quality, their educational level, introductory, intermediary, or advanced, their open access status, and their pertinent metadata in order to catalog each one appropriately with the link to the original source in the referatories collection. The responsibility of the translation from one language to the other of these OERs 
have, must be put uh, in, uh, to put it into the language of the learner, must be placed on the learner so as to maintain the overall content of the referatory reduced and in a workable dimension. Automated and gratuitous web available applications such as Google Translate and iTranslate have shown themselves to be adequate for this task. <clears throat> Organizations creating referatories will have to make decisions concerning the operations, the policies, and practices which are appropriate to their local laws and customs. And these include such considerations as, will access to the collection of learning objects be limited to certain classes of users or not? Will access to the collection require payment of any kind? Will there be any kind of certification of knowledge, comp of, of knowledge uh, as an option for users of the collection, requiring an online or face-to-face -face exam, special fees, use of physical or virtual issuance of certification, badges, for example, or other form of nano certification? Will there be an opportunity for the creation of communities of learning, peer-to-peer, uh, support of learning or communities of practice permitting interactivity and socialization in virtual space among the learners interested in the same subjects? Will there be forms of guaranteeing privacy of the subject searching on the part of the learners, whether they be institutional or individual persons? Certainly there should be a continuous register of the searches in order to attend efficiently the using public. But depending on local culture, removing the identity of people who are searching the collection, the identity of the user, whether corporate or individual, after he or she withdraws from the system is an important issue. What system will be used to verify periodically the continuing availability of the selected and cataloged links since on a global scale, there is often a removal or change of location of the URLs or other identifying information of linkable sites. What will be the most appropriate among the many that exist form of periodically measuring the impact of this new approach to continuous adult learning so as to assure that the targeted productive sector has its demand for the information and worker training anticipated with educational resources culled from around the world and readily at hand. Those responsible for the collection of open educational resources offered to the sector will have to regularly calibrate and adjust the rate of acquisition of new information for the collection, constantly improving the accuracy of met metadata cataloging, monitoring the communities of learning and of practice so as to identify special new needs of the user universe and increasingly extend the global search for heretofore unknown sources of useful and appropriate information, knowledge, and know-how. In this way, I propose a slim, trim information training center operating basically with resources obtained from the web can be sustainable, reliable to its users, and of strategic importance to the productive sector community it is intended to serve. I must tell you that it's taken me almost a year to find a sponsoring institution to support the investigation as to how we can implant something like this in an organization in Sao Paulo. And with a group of four other uh, interested parties, including uh, Alexander Romeshovsky, whom some of you may know from his work with self-learning on the part of students. He's worked in Mozambique and Kazakhstan and other places. He's part of our team and we'll be starting uh, our first uh, set of deliverables uh, in the next uh, two weeks. And I hope uh, by, let's say, March or April of next year, we'll have some results uh, to report. Thank you for your attention.